Happy 2024, family. This is Keep Calm and Advent On. Uh, Pastor Martin here with Pastor Mitch. Uh, we've been MIA for a little bit, but we are back. We are determined uh, to uh, bring you uh, Bible-based content that it's relatable and also that, that you can enjoy. And please let us know in the comments, uh, what else do you want to hear? Um, because, uh, uh, you know, sometimes, and we're going to be honest, sometimes it is a little difficult because there are so many subjects out there for us to talk about. Um, but we want to uh, hit hit the matter to the heart. You know, we, we want to get get your ears a, a, and your attention. So you got to let us know. Um, so today, Pastor Mitch, uh, um, we're going to be focusing our at least our attention right now, right uh, on uh, uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter two, verses 12 and 13. Right. Yes. Uh, you, want me, you want me to read uh, or you yeah, want me well, to read? Yeah, right, right before you read, I, I just want to say we I mean, we've definitely have been missing in action, um, but it's not that we have been inactive, but ministry is just, it's just I mean, it's just <laughs> like it doesn't matter what week. It doesn't matter if it's holiday weeks, if it's Easter week. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's always something going on. And yeah. so it's been a little bit difficult trying to get things going. Uh, but I think I think that the maybe the next few topics that we want to discuss w will will help us as well, right? Uh, be uh, you'll see the pun later on. Be a little bit more disciplined <laughs> when it comes to to our channel, right? And keep calm. Um, but I agree with uh, Pastor Martin. Uh, please, if if you do have a question, I've been getting some weird questions, by the way, like su like some obscure stuff from like Ezekiel, like thirty seven, bro. Like I, I don't. I know I've read it at some point. I just I have no idea what it's talking about. And so I, I got this like a like a list, a list of questions. Yeah, a church that people have given me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, how am I gonna answer this? Okay. But anyways, I'm not saying like throw out something from Ezekiel, guys, but I, I am saying definitely let us know. If you if you got a question, you want us to talk about something, uh th these conversations won't be too long. We want to get to the point as well. Uh, but we're hoping that that it's gonna be a blessing. But yeah, uh uh, Philippians 2, 12. Uh, Martin, do you mind if I pray real quick just, just before we begin? Yeah, let's pray. Let's okay, pray. let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, we just ask that as we enter this conversation and a conversation that will set us up for other uh, discussions and and hopefully things that will help uh, our listeners and viewers, uh, we ask that, um, that you be with us and guide us. And thank you for giving us this opportunity, this platform to be able to do what we're doing. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So what's up, Martin? Uh, you said Philippians uh, chapter 2. Yes. For the, 12, for the, right? Yeah. 12 and 13. Got it. Um, and I think, I think it's also safe to say that since, you know, going with the trend of new year's resolutions, we here at keep calm and admin on have a new year's resolution to bring you more content this year. So pray for us, pray for us. We're going to try to be disciplined in that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, do you want to go ahead and read or you want me to read? Yeah, I'll go ahead and read it. That's fine. Uh, Philippians two twelve. Um, I'm reading from the NIV. Uh, it says, uh, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And I'm going to add here, verse 14, if you don't mind, in verse uh, uh, all the way to verse uh, 15. It says, do, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, Philippians 2, 12 through uh, verse, first part of 16. Okay, so um, so what are, what are we, well, what is, what is the verse Let's go. What is the verse saying, and then talk about what it's not saying. Um, yeah. And by the way, I I I'll tell you what happened the first time I read this verse. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I read it at a church uh, service. Somebody was preaching. I read this verse. The first thing I thought of was that it was talking about us having to do something to be saved, mm -hmm. right? And and that that immediately just kind of created that um, that. Uh, a cognitive dissonance, right? Like, wait, 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 what? What exactly is it saying? So I think your question is excellent. What is it trying to say? What is it not saying? Mm -hmm. um, and and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll throw this in here just by way of introduction of the text. Um, uh, Paul is writing, right? That's, uh, and he's writing to the church of Philippi. And it looks like based on the first verse that he was there with them, mm -hmm. 
um, he had, it looks like he had worked with them for some time and he noticed that they were growing in their faith and, and, and doing a number of things. It, he uses, he uses the term, uh, as you have always obeyed, but he's saying, look, I'm now gone. And so now, now that I'm gone, you have to continue mm -hmm. to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I, I I assume with fear and trembling, he's saying with respect, take this seriously, right? Yeah. Do not do not play around with it. But it's that phrase, do not, uh, or to continue to work out your salvation in the absence of Paul. I'm no longer there, so you need to continue to work something. What I and and that's 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 the question. What is that working that we're talking about? What what exactly is he referring to? Is he referring to being saved by works? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's that's a really good question because the text you can you can get a little bit confused, right, with the wording that that you have. Um, but I think there is there are some uh, clarity that the rest of the verse tells us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it says, "Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you." So there, there's I think the answer, the clue to what exactly. Uh, uh, Paul is talking about, right? Um, we know that uh, there's nothing that we can earn, nothing that we can do to earn our salvation. Sure, sure. We know that God is, and the second thing is we also know that God is working in us, right? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, working uh, to transform and to change us, right? Um, so the rest of verse 13, I think, uh, gives good proof of of that conclusion, right? It says, for it is good, oh, I'm sorry, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose, right? Um, so at least that verse tells me that allowing God, right, to continue to work inside of us to do his will through us, right? Inside of us and let it, let it, let it occur. Now, Verse 14 also tells us that, right, in the like in the process of when people want to change or are pointed out certain things that must be changed, right? Uh, I don't know about you. And it's funny, my wife and I were actually talking about this yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where when someone points out a mistake or someone points out something that needs to change in your life, there's one of two types of people. There are those who humbly accept it and say, you know what, you're right. And there are those who fight every single time. Okay. Right? They don't yeah. accept yeah. it. So then it makes sense why verse 14 says, do everything without grumbling or arguing. Uh, the other, what is it? Uh, New King James says, without complaining and disputing. Right, right, right. Right? Uh, so, so at least there it gives me evidence that there is things that are not good, are not the best, and must be changed that causes people to complain, to dispute, to argue, Right? Now, if God is transforming, right, from the inside, he's transforming us from the inside out to do his good pleasure. Sure. I mean, our nature is not God's nature. God is trying to change our nature to become know. more like his. So there are going to be clashes, right, that occur as God transforms us to do more of his will. At least that's the conclusion that I come, come to. I don't know what you think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so a, a couple of things. I think you said some, some uh, very good things. Uh, number one, just to be clear, because Paul is writing... Um, let's just, let's just get it out there, right? That this idea of continuing to work out your salvation, uh, he's, he's not talking about being saved by something that you do. Like you're not, you're not gaining, um, access to God's grace by a work of some sort. Paul very clearly, right? In, uh, in Galatians chapter two, verse 16, a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely clear. And this is something that he repeats time and time again. Um, I, I, I do think that it, the text is telling me, like you come to God, right? God gives you that moment of salvation. God gives you, um, or, or that encounter of salvation. You give your life up to God. It, it's giving me the impression that after you've given yourself up to God, the work isn't done, mm. right? There is something that that comes after that. that must and, and I, I, I'm assuming some people will talk about sanctification at this point. That's fine. But 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 this idea of continuing to work and understanding that that work 
is is coming from God Himself, right? Uh, it it's God who works in you. Uh, so so God is the one that's putting in this will and, and this desire to do these things. But it is something that continues. So you can't go in and say, well, you know, I've I've accepted Jesus as my Savior. I'm good. Uh, w- w- uh, is there anything else that I have to do? Well, not to gain God's favor or His love or His grace. That's mm-hmm. been given to you freely, and you've accepted that by faith. What Paul is saying is, look, yet you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now there is still a work to be done, and you have to continue in this work. And when God is trying to do these things in you, the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on this. It's this idea that, well, God, I mean, do I really want to do this, though? <laughs> ah, but, but, but I know it's good because God is, is pointing me to this. But ah, there are times, look, and there are, there are, there are um, uh, uh, Bible personalities uh, and, and important figures in Scripture that go through this, this struggle, right? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking the first one that comes to mind is Elijah. And I mean, he's doing all these amazing things for God, gets a moment of fear, takes off when Jezebel is trying to chop off his head. He flees. And when God tells him, look, why are you here in this cave? Why are you fleeing? He says, I don't want to, like, I'm, he, he literally said, I don't want to do this. I'm done. <laughs> like, like I'm the only one left and this is too much for me. And you can see this, 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 his will against God's will, right? And And God has to come in and say, look, I'm the one that's sustaining you. Here's another one, a bad one, perhaps, Jonah, where go to Nineveh, I have a job for you to do, right? There's something else that comes after your role as a prophet. You have to continue working in this. And Jonah says, no, I don't want to go, goes through all that experience. And at the very end, he's still complaining. So Mm -hmm. I I think you're right. Um, A lot of times when God is trying to do a work in us, there are going to be moments where we're going to want to push back as humans. But but the text is saying, do all, everything without grumbling or arguing. Um, remember that that the source of these things that you know are right and you know that you should do comes from God and and know that the work isn't finished, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I, I, you, we, uh, we give our lives up to God. We, we turn our lives over to Jesus. And Jesus comes in and says, okay, let's get to work. And that, it's going to have some growing pains. Yeah, yeah, you know it, 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 and if we're honest to all the biblical uh, men, right? Because uh, it's funny, but I don't see this among the women in the Bible. I only see this with the guys. <laughs> uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think I think we fight more correction and 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 uh, what God wants to do in us more 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 than the ladies. You know, um, I'll give I'll give you one though. I will give you one. Um, um, Moses' sister, um, Miriam, Miriam. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, Hey, uh, but, <laughs> but you're right. It is, it is, it, it could be it's because number. yeah, it, it, the Bible out, uh, the stories of men outnumber women for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but I, I mean, I think it can happen on both sides. Yeah. True. True. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, now that you said Moses, right. Uh, mm. Moses has moments in his life, both at the beginning and towards the end where you see God, uh, working. Sure. through him right sure. transforming him i'll give you another one i just spoke to this with the with the kids at our church school uh joshua joshua at the very beginning of, of his call after moses had died god god had to repeat to him three times in joshua chapter one you know uh, be strong and of good courage be strong and of good courage yeah now he needed to uh reaffirm joshua that that same presence that god had with moses he was going to be with them sure. with him right as as now the leader um, but, but there was, a, there was a, uh, a, a tension there between, uh, doubt and faith, right. That doesn't come naturally to, to a lot of us, right. Uh, another person that, that comes to mind that as his relationship with God grew, you can see his development, but you also see ch- strands or, or I'm sorry, uh, um, traces of his old self, Peter. Peter, right, in, in Acts after Jesus had died, um, he he was presented with the dream, right, of the animals coming down from heaven, right? That and this was not talking about food, this was talking about the Gentile work, right? Yeah. Uh yeah. again, God was working out in him some, a prejudice that he had against the Gentiles, right? right? Um, and there constantly we see, 
we see God working within people to transform, to continue to transform. It's not like, okay, an encounter with Jesus automatically, boom. No, with, with now with some, that can be, that can be. Sure. But with, I would say with most, that's not the case. It has to continue. It's almost like God patiently chips away to that statue of, of the formless rock sure. to, to reflect right his image um at least that that's what, what comes to mind and jonah was another one that i thought about as well yeah yeah but by, by the way you mentioned peter it's it's so weird because i was reading this quote uh, earlier today and i'm i'm just going to share it with you because it's talking about how how peter at at some moment was uh duplicitous right i mean he was he was w one way with certain people and then another way with the uh, with uh, a more zealous a uh, jewish yeah. community and so um uh uh, in in Acts of the Apostles, when Ellen White uh, comments about this, uh, you know, she basically says that you, you know Peter was failing, right, and mm -hmm. and he was, but he was growing. And at the very end, uh, she says this: she says, "May God give every man a realization of his helplessness, his inability to steer his own vessel straight and safe." into the harbor this was mm. one of the lessons that peter needed to learn after he had he had uh, admitted that he had made the mistakes in 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 uh near the crucifixion of jesus right and all that moment i mean this is way after uh, peter is still growing but what but the lesson that god is trying to teach him is you are unable and you are helpless you cannot steer that vessel on your own into mm -hmm. that safe harbor you need me to do that and i think that paul is getting to that point of this idea you continue to work out your own salvation but god is the one that's 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 uh that's working in you the will to act so i i kind of picture this again this is we're not saying that you must do something so that god can say i want to save you or to offer his salvation that is completely free and by faith what we are saying is look there are things that need to be done in order to strengthen your faith and to improve your life and to get closer to God and to maintain faithful as best as you can. I mm -hmm. think that we would call these, there are different terms. I normally would call these spiritual disciplines, right? Um, uh, I, I know the, the term Christian disciplines as well, or just simply disciplines, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, things that we do to be better disciples in a way. And, and, uh, I, I, but I have to learn that these things exist because, and, and God gives us these things, mm -hmm. right? He says, look, do this or do that. But they exist because you cannot steer your own vessel into the safe harbor. You need something more so that your harbor, so that you can, you can take that boat into the safe harbor and get to where you're going. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and again, this is, this is not something about, Hey, let me do this stuff so that I can, I can be better right and all of a sudden god can look down on me and say oh look yeah well, this is a great person let me save them that that's not it it's hey lord i've given my life up to you i want to grow i want to grow in you we t in in adventist circles we talk about growing in christ right but but what is what does that mean like what what do you have to do and i think he this is what paul is talking about uh continue to work out your salvation hey there's some effort that you have to put into this yeah. And 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 you got to let God do that. And so Christian disciplines become very very important. No, you don't have to work for your salvation, but yes, you do have to put in work so that God can continue to do the job that he's trying to do. Mhm. Mm I I, I want to ask you cuz you know, I know especially uh I w let's say within the last 10 years, five sure. years, even five years, even let's just say, I don't think a lot of people like the word discipline, but I know that there are people that have it right. For example, right now we see social media, you find, uh, and this is my favorite example to use. You find people who are health nuts, right? Yeah. They're, uh, they're workout influencers. Now their discipline, you see it daily, right? As their post, as they, they, they give you tips, they give you tricks, they give you suggestions. Some even give you their own meal plans, right? Yeah. Different yeah. things. Yeah. And this you can find in every area of work, right? For those of us who are pastors, you can find pastors, what they do to, to grow their spiritual walk, you know, for the one who loves cameras, right. uh, right. video uh, pictures, right? Uh, um, 
um, or, or, or just there's there are certain things that you must do to keep your your tool belt up to date. Right, you, right. You can say that, right? And why not? Why not us think that there are certain things, certain disciplines, certain tools that must be sharpened, that must be uh, maintained, that that must be uh, uh, um, kept up to date in order for us to grow sure. in our relationship with God, right? Um, and and this actually reminds me of another verse in in Philippians, also Philippians chapter one, verse verse three and and four um paul also speaking right um and i think they're both linked uh i thank you god uh, i thank my god every time i remember you and all my prayers for all of you i always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now now uh there are two things that that stand out to me in that verse uh, it mentions partnership partnership is not just a one-time deal Partnership is a is a time, right? There are terms to a partnership that both parties must um, must keep in order for the partnership to be strong, right? There's things that on one side must do that the other side must do. When the partnership fails, is because either one or both have failed in keeping their terms of the partnership. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. Um, yeah. So then, verse six. I'm sorry. So I read verses three to six. Uh, verse six is, I think, what brings it all together. It says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it mm. on to completion, right? You were talking uh, when we were reading the previous verse, right, uh, in chapter two, about we can't do anything to save ourselves. And we're that's not what we're saying, that there's any work that we must done. Because here, Paul is, Paul is confirming it again, right? God began the good work in yeah. us. Yeah. And he will carry it to completion until the day of sure. Christ Jesus, right? Sure. So so I think in, in these group of verses, both in chapter one and chapter two, we have um the the I think the framework of us understanding that that right, the one who completes the work of salvation in us, that's God. Yeah. That's number one. Uh but number two. There are things that God must change in us that he either reveals it to uh, to us, right? Reveals it to us. And we must have the right attitude to, to allow God to make those changes. But there are certain things that we must work also to be able to change with the Lord's help. I'm, I'm hoping yeah. I'm... I'm no, 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 I think so. By the way, I feel like somebody along this way will push back because I've heard this pushback before. I've, I've actually heard this pushback on social media, YouTube. Uh, a, a lot from evangelicals as well. Okay, like like evangelical Christians, Catholics don't do this pushback as much. All right, but but they have a a, a kind of a slightly different concept, I think, than what we're trying to explain. But uh, somebody could easily say, "Look, um, uh, it, it, this still sounds like I have to do something, right, uh, for yeah. me to be saved." Mm -hmm. And I I would argue that like you would have to analyze the words of jesus for example when he says uh in in uh john 14 15 if you love me keep my commandments okay let's not get into what the commandments mean but let's just grab something that jesus will say for example right um uh, he'll say love your love your enemies or love those who are against you is the loving that person who is against me if I do that, does that make me earn my salvation? The answer would be no, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. are saved because God has loved you first and you were a sinner. You were doing things you weren't supposed to do. This is salvation at its most basic. But then Jesus says, look, if you love me, I want you to love others. And that loving others is, a, is, a, is something that is produced from what God has already done in your life. Now you can go in and say, "Well, I, I don't want to love so and so," and 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 this is the clash of wheels that we were talking about, right? That moment where you say, "I know that God is trying to do change stuff in me, but I don't want to do it," and 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 Jesus would say, "But this is what I'm asking you to do. Do it. Trust me. Do this. Okay. I will take care of the rest." And so I think this idea of doing something to be saved is not what we're talking about. It is doing something. You you talked about the term partnership. 
right? That it, it's this idea of, look, I'm in this. Ah, I, do, I, do I really want to go and forgive that person who called me this or called me that? No, but I'm going to do it anyways. And the Bible is saying that work that God began in you, he is faithful to, to that. Just giving yourself into that, that act, that, that thing that you are doing is life-changing in itself. God is going to use that to continue to change your life. Um, we, we talk about, uh, discipline. It, it's funny because I, I, th I think the, the term itself, right. Uh, we use it for many different, different things, right. Uh, and it's basic. I, I hear a couple of definitions for discipline, uh, the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior, mm. um, uh, the controlled behavior resulting from discipline that could be discipline as well. The activity or experience that provides mental or physical training, a system of rules of conduct. All of a sudden we talk about grace, grace, and, and we think that rules don't matter. No, no, rules still matter. It's just yeah. a different context now. The context is post-grace. Grace is now going to use those rules to do something different. The law is no longer telling you uh, you are condemned to death. Now the law is beautiful. Now the law is something that you want to do because you've been changed by the Spirit. And, it, and now this becomes a sort of discipline, right? A system of rules made to, to help you in the formation of your behavior. Uh, interestingly enough, we are called to go, uh, Matthew 28, right? Verses uh, 19 and 20, uh, go and make disciples. That, that phrase that Jesus uses in the Great Commission, disciples, is, is just hand in hand with discipline. They come from the exact same place. And mm -hmm. so a, a disciple isn't someone that just says, I believe in Jesus. It is someone who is following Jesus. And someone who follows Jesus is someone who is trying to do the things that Jesus did. This is what continuing to work your salvation means. Mm -hmm. and, and God is the one that uses these things. So, for example, uh, and, and I'll, I'll send it back to you here, uh, but 1 Thessalonians um, uh, chapter 5, uh, again, Paul is writing one more time, right? Uh, th there's, a, there's, there's a list of things that that Paul is going to tell Christians, he's going to say, "Look, um, uh, now we ask you." I'm, I'm reading First Thessalonians five twelve. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their of their work. Live in peace with each other. We urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Verse 16, rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. What? Martin. That's a list of things to do. Like we can't ignore the fact that that's a list of things to do. Mm -hmm. You're not doing those things to gain God's favor. You already got God's favor. God already loves you. Mm -hmm. These things exist because we have entered into a partnership with God. And that's why that last, that last phrase, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. By the way, you're trying to do them outside of Christ Jesus. That's, that's a legalism. You're trying to save yourself without Jesus. No, mm -hmm. no. In Jesus, we are doing these things. Hey, and that's a list of things, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, that reminded me, as, as you were reading, that reminds me of another list of things that we must do, right? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, um, and this is in uh, uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18, right? Where it tells us to put on the armor of God, right? Um, now, we put on armor for a reason, right? If it says, finally, be strong in the Lord sure. and in his, in his mighty power. So again, right, what, we're, what we do not want to say, we are not saying that we ourselves save ourselves, that there's any power that, that we have right. over, but we are relying 100% completely in the Lord, right? right? Um, and, and it's God who is doing work in us. It is through God that we have victory through, uh, through, uh, um, against evil against our own uh um sinful natures right uh, here for example uh verse verse 11 in, in chapter 6 ephesians um put on put on the full armor of god so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes right for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers 
against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. So we cannot fight a battle that's not uh, that's not uh, um, we cannot fight a battle that we are not we have no idea what it's about and God here is revealing over to us it's, it's over way head. over it not yeah. only over our heads it's above our pay grade and okay. we are not even strong yeah. enough mm -hmm. with all the military might that we have the power that is fighting against us is number one on the spiritual realm number two it it is far greater, far smarter, far, far stronger than we are. So we have to use tools, right? Yes. To, to defend ourselves and to have victory. Now, these tools are the tools that God gives us. Right. I don't know about you, Mitch, but just like every single tool we have to create this, this podcast, to create this, this video, we need to learn how to use that's right right learning how to use requires you taking time out of your day so you can investigate know what you can and cannot do right that requires work that requires discipline sure right and check out the armor that god tells us that we must wear right put on the full armor of god so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand now there's another part there too that doesn't say that we fight it said we we yeah, can't we stand, stand our ground yeah you know most soldiers when you talk to uh military vets they talk about the battle right right when you stand your ground is because you see the the you see the the um the enemy approaching right and you do not want the enemy to to take more ground so you have to stand your ground right yeah there's also a mental decision that is made right um so how do we stand our ground against this evil attack well right. it says stand firm by the way martin can, yeah. I, can I say something about that yeah you know, I, th I think that that's that's excellent man i i believe that the offensive efforts in this battle have already been done by Jesus mm -hmm. and he has already won the war. Mm -hmm. The job of the Christian is not to go offensively. In other words, I need to go and kill the enemy. The enemy is already done. He's defeated. He's been defeated. The job, according to Ephesians chapter six, is our job is to stand. Because the enemy is defeated, all you have to do is put on this armor, you're about to read this, right? Put on this armor, but you stand firm because the victory is already there. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's an act of faith, by the way, right? It's, it's you're saying, look, uh, I know that these things, if I put them on, doesn't mean I win the battle because the battle is already won. Mm -hmm. It just keeps me on the winning side. Yep. yep. That's it. And, and my job yep. is to stand firm in that which has been given to me. Sorry, I, I just wanted to chime in. No, 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 and 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 it, and it, it. I think that's an excellent uh, intro to, you know, the the parts of the armor. It says, "Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth mm -hmm. buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace." In addition to uh, to all this, take up the shield of faith, which um, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one yeah. take the helmet of salvation uh, um, of salvation and the sword which i which i think is interesting that both are mentioned together the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit sure. it's not just salvation or just the spirit but both them together right sure. it's like those who worship god will worship him in spirit and in truth so they're both together right, right? um and it says, which is the word of God. True, and then 19, right. and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying yes, yes. for all the Lord's people. Yeah. There's a continuation of things that we must do, you know, to keep the armor on. Right. And not just that, but to pray when he says, and keep praying. Right. And, and, and again, right. This, this keeping requires endurance and requires practice. Right. Because, uh, you know, you and I were talking at this before we started to record. Um, we both like working out, you know, and shout out to our friend, uh, Jason, right. A uh, member from keep calm. Who, 
he yeah he he is an inspiration right he has discipline to work out and not only has he inspired you and i he's inspired his family you know i saw a picture of him and his and his brother right jared um and and that spiritual discipline or i'm sorry that gym discipline right he's inspired others to do and in the same way right paul says paul tells the believers look imitate me yeah do what i do yeah right which again there's 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 if paul was disciplined in a certain area we must be disciplined in that area too and he tells us look do what i do pray constantly put on the armor you know uh, place your faith in, in god but remember that this is not a battle that you won because it's already won through jesus right right and and, and but but in all of that there's this idea that there is something that you have to do yeah right uh and and there is something that is necessary to do to withstand mm -hmm. um to, and and god helps you in that right I, god has already provided the tools but he is also going to use that um to help you stand and so i i think here is where you know we we bring in this idea of spiritual disciplines right this this endurance this perseverance of things that that must be done i i do find it interesting uh because and you were telling me about this maybe you want to chime in here um i think as pastors we get those questions we're like hey i feel like i'm I'm a little bit low on my faith right now i feel mm -hmm. like my faith is not as strong like i'm still coming to church but i i just feel like i'm not where i should be and and i i don't know if this happens to you i would assume it does i think most pastors would probably do this the next thing that's going to come out of our mouth is going to be something like well tell me about what you do during the week right or tell me are are, well, are you studying your bible what do you do to feed your spiritual life? Right, right. And 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 it's funny because I've asked these questions before to, you know, people who have spoken to me about this. And they're like, well, you know, like, I know I should be reading my Bible more often. And, and I know I should be, like, spending more devotional time and praying. But, you know, and then and then they begin to tell you, oh, work, school, family. Family. Yeah. And so we we end up coming back to this idea of, there are such things as disciplines. Um, there, uh, certain Christian habits, uh, behaviors that the Bible encourages us to do, so as to strengthen our faith, mm -hmm. right? To continue to work out your salvation, to put on that armor of God, as we're saying, right? Um, and and I and I think that we we often like I I feel like we don't um like like we don't uh give a list to people right and we say look here it is or, or at church uh we we don't go today we're going to talk about christian disciplines that actually sounds kind of boring when you present it that way honestly right we're going to talk about christian disciplines discipline number one so so or habit number one but if you think about it i i think where if you're going to church if you're not and you're listening to this for the first time that's fine uh, but most churchgoers will probably hear their pastor speak about those disciplines, even though they won't call them Christian disciplines, mm -hmm. right? And so, so, so I wanted to ask you, I, and we, we want to expand on this further in in other conversations. But maybe to by by way of trying to close this conversation and, and just open it up to the other ones, what would you say are certain Christian disciplines, certain Christian habits? that are important that that symbolize that putting on of that armor or you know that that it's the working out our salvation in fear and trembling that mm -hmm. you would say hey i think christians need to do this i i don't know give me three of them maybe i i just what comes to mind well the first one is you got to study your bible okay yeah, sure. <laughs> study and read right there's there's two aspects to that you got to study and read read yeah. to to just read the stories and 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 encourage but then study to dive deep right yeah. to to uncover those hidden gems that that when you when you when you do it and this you do it to discipline number two you have to pray yeah. yeah and not just pray you know when things are going bad but pray to for for guidance for for patience you know for okay lord i'm going to study and and i have no motivation lord or, or i'm struggling with my faith lord or i want i want to testify to to this person you know pray for everything yeah. And 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 be intentional with praying because I and we're going to talk about it more right when it comes That's to right. studying the Bible and, and prayer, but those are are two. And then the third thing that I think comes hand in hand because I I, I mentioned this in my sermon on Sabbath um, was if we're reading and we understand what we're reading 
and we're praying, right? We're doing those things together. Perfect. I think the third thing that comes comes naturally is sharing. Okay. Sharing, you know what? Today I was reading this and bam. And and it doesn't have to be like a sermon. It's just like sharing. Look, look, or or because because God through just those two most basic disciplines, right? Perfect. Reading of the word and praying, God will tell you, okay, share with this person. Share with this person. Right. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you this illustration. On on Thursday, um, actually, when when you when you uh, gave the the ten days of prayer, right? That was Thursday. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was Thursday. Right. Uh, do you do you remember the elder that came in uh, before you? Uh, he did. He did the praying through God's word. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He mentioned that uh, a, a coworker of his was was uh, going through a really rough time. Okay. And and he. I, by the way, I don't think it was with my with my. I think it was the day before, um, uh, the other that you're speaking because I know you did the prayer that day. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. Okay, but, but I I did see it though. I did see it. Yeah. Okay. So this was I think Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. I think so. Wednesday, so, or Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. So he mentions that that uh, um you know coworker tells him you know I'm going through this rough time. Yeah. And 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 he told the coworker, uh, I'll pray for you. Sure. Now that's usually where we stop, right? I'll pray for you. Right. As he was walking out, he said he heard God's voice and said, "Go back and pray with her now." Okay. That is being led by the Holy Spirit, sure. right? Listening as you pray, right? As your God allow you allowing God to speak to you, and He went back and prayed. Now, I don't know uh, about this man's uh. uh uh, spiritual disciplines, you know, does he pray? I, I assume he's, uh, he does, you know, he, uh, sharing the word, right? Absolutely. But the sharing part comes in connection with the praying yeah. and yeah. the study yeah. of the word, right? Because now you are being, you are open to God's leading, right? That comes, if we want to be more open to God's leading, if we want to be more, uh, uh, receptive to, to those hidden truths or they, and, and I want to make this clear, Hidden to us because, right, spiritual things are spiritually okay. concerned. Um, that can only happen when we take time with prayer and uh, and Bible study. So I would say those three things: uh, uh, st studying and reading the Bible. Um, number two, praying yeah. for everything. Yeah. All right. Uh, and number three, sharing or test your testimony. Right, testifying, sharing sharing the, the yeah word. let me let me, let me I, I think those are great by the way um and and absolutely basic fundamental right um mm -hmm. the the uh bible reading prayer and again we'll get into this um sharing with others these need to be habitual practices mm -hmm. among christians uh and by the way at, at this day and age like if you if you say uh, i'm i'm just not a good reader the thing is that there are now ways for something to read to you Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, and we'll get into that. We'll get into that uh, in, in future conversations. Uh, I, if I can add a couple more, uh, I think church attendance, Absolutely. Um, it, it, the, the community worship, I think that is a discipline, right? That's a, a getting together. And, and I, and I get it. That means, you know, I, I got to put some things away so that I can go and do this with people. I, you know, I wish more people would go to church on Wednesdays, honestly. Uh, you know, we have, we have prayer services I mean, on Wednesdays. Yeah. Uh, because it's good, good to come together, and and what we do at our church is, you know, we share testimonies, and uh, you know, we we give praise whenever praise giving is another one of those uh, Christian disciplines. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, it's just important to do that. Um, I I think service is also another one. I know you mentioned sharing. I, I just want to make the distinction there. Uh, this is acts of charity, right? Mm -hmm. Helping people out, uh, being being that that um, that visible. Uh, grace-filled act in their in their life. I think that's important. Um, and you know, and we could probably add things like fasting in there as well. Uh, I we had a small discussion. Well, we'll may, maybe we'll put it up. You know, just like it's a quick two three minute thing. But <laughs> Sabbath keeping for Adventists, it's a big thing, right? Sabbath keeping it is it a discipline to, or not? <laughs> yeah, it, it, is it a spiritual discipline? And uh, and and I I I think. You'll see it. You guys will see it. Uh, we'll, we'll post it. I convinced Martin. I think this is the first time I ever convinced him of anything. But anyways, that, that's besides the point. Okay. But um, family worship sessions. All these things I think are 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 um, are spiritual disciplines. Now, we are not going to talk about all of these necessarily, but we're going to talk about some of the most important ones that we think will be important for you. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to have this in in you know shorter conversations. 
But we want to talk about why it's important to do these things. Again, not to be saved. We've established that already. But but it is to to stand firm, to work, to continue to work out that salvation and fear and trembling, um, uh, to continue growing in Christ. And so, uh, you know, if you have questions about this, I, I just want to throw this out. If you have questions about this or, or you've heard something, someone say something like, hey, uh, please don't ask this question because I don't know if I want to answer it, but... Uh, you know, I, I heard that, in, you know, one of the spiritual disciplines is that we need to keep the feast of the Old Testament. Like, let, let's not get into that conversation. But, you know, if you, you've had questions about spiritual disciplines or things that you feel like, hey, I, I, I want to strengthen my faith. I heard that this could help. But I mean, where, where, where is the place? Right. Uh, please, please let us know. Mm-hmm. Um, also for that. And I, I just saw it on the screen. Martin, you're right. Please subscribe. OK, to the channel. Uh, we, we do want to place this channel in your radar of places you want to go to, to get biblical answers and, you know, and get closer in your walk with God. So, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, click on that little bell for notifications, share it with somebody else. And I think, I think it's going to help. And, uh, ultimately we'll be coming back. We'll be coming back with, uh, with a couple more things. For those of you who have been with us from the very beginning, if you're wondering where Andrew and Jason are, um, they're they're around. They're, they haven't disappeared. They'll they'll be joining us for other conversations. Uh, mm-hmm. we're, we're just taking different approaches to this at this point. And this uh, conversation and future conversations will also be on Spotify. So if you just want to listen to them in the gym or as you are practicing your own uh, dis- personal uh, discipline, uh, yeah, yeah, physical discipline, right? I mean, you want to listen to some spiritual discipline talk. There you go. It just just works hand in hand. So uh, we'll make sure that's up there as well. Uh, but but Martin, I I, I don't want to share any more because we're going to come back with these other conversations, and and I think uh, uh, there's going to be a lot more to say. But any any, any last words from you? Well, uh, now that you mentioned subscribe, remember to subscribe and and turn on the notification. That yeah. way you get the our next conversations, and you know um, start practicing start practicing those basic ones right now. Start with praying more. Uh, start with uh, you know just reading your Bible, trying to make it a habit, right? Mitch said hab- habitual uh, spiritual practices, and you'll see that that as as you understand each one of the the disciplines that we're going to be diving a little deeper into, um, you're going to see that hopefully God God will show you that they're not as hard as you might think they are. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and and I'm sure Mitch has the same feeling. We don't say this because we've mastered them. No, we're, we're growing in our own spiritual disciplines, you know? Um, And, and that's what it is. You know, we want to admonish one another. We want to encourage one another, inspire one another. And hopefully this not only will inspire you, but hopefully you will inspire someone else. Amen. Amen. Well, look, we're gonna let people go. Um, we appreciate it. We normally end with the word of prayer, so let's just let's just go ahead and do that, uh, okay. and uh, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for letting us have this conversation. We're hoping uh, that as we enter into a, a new season of of uh, discussions, and specifically on this talk about uh, things that can help our faith and uh, and habits that we should have as Christians, uh, just guide us, uh, help us see that this is not about our salvation in the sense that we're trying to earn it. Um, you've already given us that and we praise you for it. You know, this is, this is where you want us to grow and, uh, and we want to grow in your hands. Uh, we want you who has started the work to finish it. Uh, we thank you for being with us and just ask that you bless all those who have listened to this and, um, we'll, uh, we'll see him on the next time. We thank you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Well, anyways, uh, for Keep Calm Having On, uh, we appreciate it. Again, my name is uh, Mitchell Aguinaga. So Martin Zelaya also joining us. And uh, uh, we hope to see you next time. Um, or listen to us or just connect with us again. Uh, and we're hoping that at least this next few episodes and the journey of spiritual disciplines will be a blessing for your life. God bless. Keep calm and having on. We'll see you soon.